Our stream is live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adventure on so many levels. We're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Woohoo! Yay, Dungeons and Dragons! <laughs> I'm Christiana Ellis. I'm the Dungeon Master. Our players tonight Starla Hutchton as Nurakina Ethu. Greetings and salutations. Jenny Meltzer as Cadence of the Water. Hello! James Meltzer as Ket of the Sands. Hi, everybody! I'm Dr. James! <laughs> Wash your hands! Hi, Dr. James! <laughs> Mark Kilfoyle as Alaric Copperbeard. I'm not sleeping so well. Is anybody else not sleeping so well? <laughs> and uh, we, we have a Chu Schubert as Otterkey uh, running late, but hoping to join us soon. So, welcome back, everybody. Um, last time, let's talk about what happened last time. You, uh, you were there in the Barrier Mountains. You had, uh, been discussing logistics now that you had resurrected Alaric's father. But, uh, you decided to, uh, check in on an old friend via scrying. Um... And that led to uh, a terrifying chase across the plains as the Marut located you and pursued you uh, ruthlessly. That uh, was a mistake. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> in hindsight, sure. <laughs> You'll know better next time. Uh, so you discovered a couple of things on the way. One is as your stopover through uh, Emirate Arboris informed you apparently Amethyst had already been taken away from there by the Marut uh, in your absence and so she was not there uh, and you have been since informed by Queen Solomonia that she was taken to the same sort of strange prison that Melicanth and Grandmother Praxis seem to be in uh, you also managed to make your way back to the Feywild, where Queen Solomonia was able to prevent the Marut from plane shifting directly to your location, giving you a little bit of time to breathe. Uh, at which point, all of you uh, completely fell apart as a cohesive unit and argued with each other and did a bunch of shouting and uh, so on. So. Seems accurate. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> so I don't know if we need to really go into the ins and outs of all that conversation, but what Nira and Cadence decided to do is to consult Queen Solomonia about the best way to uh, restart the, the task of trying to recover the renegade's heart by uh, traveling to the abyss and helping out the Gith Yankee who seemed to have hit a bit of a stumbling block there. And you were informed that the best way to get there from where you are is via a portal to the abyss, which happens to be located at Grandmother Praxis's house in the Feywild. In the meantime, everyone else is kind of figuring out how they feel about the current situation, trying to think if they can think of any better solutions and there's a lot of failing to think of better solutions at the same time that everyone feels like there has to be one but also we finished last episode with Alaric for the second time offering up a prayer to Rusham and Nira heard it and realized something so, uh, with that, Nira, how do you react upon sensing this prayer and realizing that you have an ability you had previously either not had or not been aware of? Well, honestly, I'm doing my best to just ignore it. And put it out of my head I don't want to get tangled up in it and so as you know everyone's going to bed and taking their long rest I do my meditation but it's very restless um, 
the words of Alaric's prayer keep echoing in my head and interrupting um, my nightly meditations and I'm just, I feel like I'm not really getting good rest. And so after, you know, the four hours, I uh, kind of wake up and it's just, I'm still restless and moving about and it's like my, my fingers, they just, they itch. Like I, I need to do something. So I leave the room to find something to do because there is nothing here to entertain me. And as I walk down the stairs, I kind of, I see all the, the collected bags of holding that we've gathered. And I'm like, you know what? I'm haven't done it for a while. So what? I'll just, I'll, I'll take inventory while everybody gets some rest. And I just kind of going through everything and I get to one of them. And I come across a star sapphire. That's, I, I mean, I, I can't even remember where we picked it up. Is this one of the ones from uh, Neocortex's treasure? There was the um, uh, jewelry box full of uh, valuable I gems don't, there. I don't think so. You might have also found it just at some miscellaneous. You guys don't spend a lot no. of your treasure, so you might have just yeah. had it in the back for a while. And so I come across this star sapphire and it just, it, it holds my fascination and, and uh, there, there's, there's some, something about it that just is, is calling to me. So I, I kind of put it in my pocket and hold on to the idea and continue rummaging around. And I come across various like little scraps of things, little bits of leather, that sort of thing and start to get this idea. Um, because I'm hearing, again, Alaric's words bouncing around in my head and and this, this desire that he has to be more, to, to help us more than he already is. And I feel like maybe there's something I can do. I mean, it might not be much, but I'm going to give it a try. So back up in my room, I've got all these things and I'm taking these bits of cord and and uh, kind of braiding them together, you know, and, and until, you know, I've, I've got something that I can wrap around this gem and, you know, make, make it long enough that it might be a necklace. And I hold this in my hand. And my eye is drawn to this star-shaped highlight in the center of it. And I just, I feel so focused on it. Like there's just some power that kind of flows through myself and then into my fingers. Uh, and, and I can feel it going into this gem as I'm focusing on these words of Alaric still echoing in my brain so these words and these power and this power it all just kind of entwines together with intent he wants to help so i'm going to give him what i can to help him feel more capable and necessary and worthy and that's what i have done with my time while everyone else is sleeping. Okay, so as you have uh, crafted this thing, you still have it physically, right? Correct. So have you essentially, are, has crafting this thing, do you feel that that has sort of discharged this, this uh, ability or, or do you think that that is still pending? I feel like it's, there's more there, but I still need a little bit of time to sort of wrestle with it um, and, and think it over. So the, this I know for sure I can do and the rest I still need a little bit of time, just okay. a little bit. All right. So 
I think, uh, does anyone else have any business that they would have gotten up to overnight? You were kind of all turning in for a long rest at the end of last session. Well, I had my say with, with Cadence last time, so I think I'm good. All right. Aside from tossing and turning and imagining the Marut brutalizing the Copperbeard lands and state and his family, Aside from that, no, I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh, there's no sun to rise because <laughs> there's no windows in your pocket to mention, but also uh, even if you d could see outside, it's always daytime out there because it's the Feywild. But it is enough time passed that you all feel rested. You've had your long rest even and and you're waking up <laughs> time for some milk <laughs> <laughs> all right so. i go downstairs to the kitchen you there frederick get me some milk please of course sir. Ah, thank you uh, warm it up a little bit for me, too, please. We know how you like it. <laughs> so, uh, who else is uh, getting up and around? I'll go downstairs, too. Yeah, I, I don't have any... I've, I've completed all of my spell preparations and things for the day, so... Mm -hmm. Wander downstairs and maybe have a cup of tea. Hmm. Alaric amazingly has slept in. Someone go check on Alaric. He might be dead. You should probably do that. Okay. I'll be right back. Don't touch my milk. Except for you, Cadence. You can have a little milk. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, Nair, you can have milk too if you want. For your tea. <laughs> I'm good, but thank you. Okay. I go upstairs and... Alaric! Oh my god, what? Buddy. Oh, oh, whew, buddy. Can, can I come in? Uh, yeah, sure, it, whatever. It's, it's really me. It's not me playing Nira this time. I come in. <laughs> you see him holding the axe. <laughs> Whoa. Everybody. Better not be playing any more tricks on me. No, no tricks, man. It was just, it's not unlike you. It, I mean, it's so unlike you to sleep in. Usually you're an early riser. I was just coming concerned that maybe you were dead or something. But you, know, you seem to be in... Uh, normal Alaric spirits. I um. I think I just get used to hearing the sound of the tones again from home. Mm. I think I was expecting it to wake me up. I didn't. I didn't sleep all that well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you get the point of exhaustion for that, or what? <laughs> no, I managed to get <laughs> enough. Just enough. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. I'm just um, looking out for your well-being. That's all. Um, so. Are, are you okay? Are you like doing? I know, like we just were, you know, went through some heavy stuff at your at your home. Are, are you doing okay? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I just, I don't know. I, I start to wonder sometimes about the decisions I've made and and how I came to be where I am. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yesterday was, well, it was a lot of ups and downs. I was happy to see my father restored, but seeing the Marud in his halls, it threw me. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was kind of crazy. I, I mean, I can, I can kind of relate, a little bit. So, I mean, if if there's anything you ever want to talk about, or you're feeling kind of blue. You know, I'm here for you, buddy. I know that I play a lot of tricks and I like to have fun and joke around and stuff like that, but you know, when it comes right down to it, man, I mean, you and me, man, we're, we're, we're tight. I'm I'm pretty sure that I know your heart is in the right place. Okay. Your head may be a little messed up and maybe your heart is split at times. I mean, By the way, have you yeah. done anything about that recently? About what? Deciding whom you should give your heart to. 
Oh man, my, my heart's already given to Cadence. She, she's got my heart. I did. Uh, we had it out. We talked and, and we're good. We, you want to talk about people that are tight, man? We're tight. Just make sure that she knows that and make sure that the, the queen doesn't steal your heart from her. Oh, the queen. Yes. Oh, that's what this is about. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to say too much here, but it's okay. Believe me, my heart belongs to Cadence. I just like to stay on the queen's good side. She, she could be a powerful ally. She can be. And for the moment, she seems to be happy with us. Yes, well, I think we should be happy with her. I mean, she's trusted us. We've trusted her. There's been no no, no gerrymandering of any kind. You know, everything's been on the up and up so far. I mean, we have no reason not to trust her. What do you think of Grandmother Praxis? Do you trust her? Oh, man. That's a, she's, not, she's not like any grandmother I ever met. No. But, uh, I mean, she got, she ain't got no Werther's Originals in her pockets. Um, I dare no, say man. you wouldn't want anything from her pockets. Definitely not, and that's that's kind of my point. I, I don't entirely 100% trust the grandmother, which is sad, because grandmothers are, you know, you're supposed to be kind. You're supposed to trust the grandmothers, but grandmother Praxis? Eh, I don't know about her. I'm... I'm finding myself with complicated thoughts, with her especially. I don't trust her, not in the way that I trust you or Cadence or Autarchy, Amethyst, or Nirakina, but... Mm. I, no, I mean, she... why, why should you, though? I mean, it's not like you've... I mean, all the stuff we've been through, I mean, we kind of have to rely on one another. We don't know her all that well, so you're, you're kind of right not to trust her. But I think we know her better than we thought. I think we really do. You think so? I think she's a twisted being. And not necessarily given to what we would call good. Mm. But I think for the point, for the moment, I think we can call her an ally. We're going to need her help anyway. I think when we go to her home and look for the portal, we won't have much time. But if she is three steps ahead of us, as I think she might be, there might be something of use to us there. Just keep an eye out. I was just going to say, I think it's best that we just yeah, keep our eyes out and be on guard around her. I mean, it stands to reason. That's the smart thing to do. So It's going not to be obvious if it is there, and there will likely be a trick involved. Mm. It'll probably be us blundering through it as usual, but... I think there will be something there. All right. That's sound advice. Uh, everyone's downstairs having the breakfast. Do you, uh, do you Are you hungry? Do you want some food? Yeah. I, I feel like I could eat, I don't know, a hillside. I'll be down in a minute. Um, do you remember? I, I don't remember what I, where my armor has gone to. The other armor, not, not this. This is nothing but an image, but it's been a long time, and I don't remember which bag, if any, it's it's been sitting in. Oh, uh, I can go dig around and look for it for you, see if it's around. I hope it hasn't been lost. All right. I'll, it needs I'll... to be cleaned, but I I think I need it. I'll do that. I'll, I'll go try and find other key and see, see where that armor's at for you. Thank you. All right. Um, and, uh, Kat, um, we don't always see eye to eye, but thank you for everything. Hey, man. You're welcome, dude. I'll be down should in we, a minute. Should we, should we hug? Don't push it. All right, man. I leave. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 when, she, when Otterkey comes back, I, when when shoot shows up, I, I'm gonna find out where that armor is. Yeah, if it's in a bag of holding somewhere. Point of order. I vaguely recall there was some point at which you were talking about like selling it or melting it down or something. This was when you you, Alaric didn't have any emotional connection to it. I don't recall. The I'm trying to remember if I details. gave it away. I don't even. I don't remember. That's why I figure. 
Are you talking about your family armor? Yeah. Yeah. You gave that to Feathercrest. I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. I figured that the idea of him not having his own memories for a long time, it's all still kind of muddy. As um, the, the overlay. Nira gets a point of inspiration for Starla remembering something that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Ah, what happened to my... Uh... So, uh, in in the meantime, um, Mark, I, I I think you're you're using your regular um, level eighteen sh sheet for now, until yeah, we, yeah. you know, until something else happens. <laughs> All right. So, um, Ket goes back downstairs. Was, oh, yeah. did, were yeah. you doing something else, Alaric? You just needed a minute. You needed to tell him, go ahead, I'll be down there in a few minutes, but you didn't have anything else to do? Well, it wasn't anything substantial. He was going to take some time to comb out his beard, oh, straighten his hair. Okay. Yeah. Actually take some time to look presentable, even though most of it isn't seen. Yeah. Sit and stare at the wall. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah, sure. All right. <clears throat> so uh, after that, you uh, make your way back down. Yep, a little extra spring in his step, weirdly. I I, I imagine that uh, Otterkey is is there. You know, I I'm I'm envisioning him eating a great big bowl of like Captain Crunch or something like that, and he's definitely doing the thing where you know he eats all the cereal out of it and then pours more cereal into where the milk is, and then when it's not enough milk, he puts more milk in, and he's just it's over and over. I don't know. After all that bread he ate last week, I imagine him with like two plates of toast, like this high. <laughs> hey, he burns a lot of calories being a paladin. You know that that lay on hands doesn't come from nowhere. He used toast? to burn them literally because he would light himself on fire. Mm -hmm. So in any case, I I imagine he's there, but not necessarily talking much because every time uh, there's a gap in the conversation, he goes, mm -hmm, and then you guys continue <laughs> <laughs> um i'm just going to nod as i come in and go straight for the larder see if i can find cold mutton or whatever is actually stored here mm -hmm. or it gets invented on the spot i suppose cold mutton hard cheese i would think that it's actually probably a stocked larder based on the con casting of the uh, mansion like you wouldn't necessarily have to have a list in your head cat but i think that it's not just instantly whatever you want it to be after the casting i think you i think like part of the casting is establishing that there is a larder with certain food in it and that's right. what's there but it's also not necessarily important to be overly concerned about that yeah yeah so yeah, you guys want to just hang out and do small talk all day or whatever. That's fine. <clears throat> so, man, you guys uh, nervous about going to hell? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not really hell. I mean, there's like the nine hells, but this is the abyss. So it's kind of like, you know, adjacent to the nine hells. Mm -hmm. Like nine hells adjacent. Yeah, man. It's like, it's, it's, you know, it's like the attic of the nine hells. Or the suburbs? Yeah, yeah, it's the suburb. There it's the nicer area. Yeah, where all the uppity demons live. Yeah, they all shop at the at the at the nice organic grocery stores and all that. Do we have enough to protect ourselves? From... I, I mean, there there are some things I can do. Good. It's not much I can do myself, but do we have any? I mean, are we just going to? Do we, we have any idea what we're going to find? We don't even know where this portal is, do we? It's yes. Oh. The queen is going to take us there to Grandmother Praxis's house. Right. Hobble. That's what she said. There was a hobble, and we're going to enter the portal through there. And we, the Git Yankee, are going to know that we're coming, and we're going to meet up with them and coordinate to figure out how to do what it is we need to do. Good. That works. We, we kind of have a plan. 
We should also think about while we're there, um, if we have the uh, materials to make another tuning fork on the off chance we need to go mm. back for some reason. Archie yeah, would know idea. more than me. Yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> he, he's still crunching, but holds a thumbs up. Do we have an ETA yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not answer. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think, you know, we keep on going and, uh, and, and Chooch will join when he can. Now, from what was seen before, near Akina, you saw it with the book, right? You saw this pishwish, and he was holding the heart? Um, n no. So as, every time this cycle starts, he's in the center of this crater. And he runs towards the edge of the crater, trying to get away from these creatures that are chasing him and they catch him every time tear him to bits and that was when i saw in the center where he had been was this heart so he doesn't necessarily carry it with him as he's running and these things didn't seem interested in it no it was strictly the focus was on him as far as i could tell yeah, they they dragged all the pieces back to the center, and it was in that pile that you saw the heart. So they do bring it back to the center, but only kind of as a matter of bringing all of him back. And do we know how he got there? He was tossed in there. We're not exactly sure who it was. What do we know? Well, it, was as, it was as punishment for, for stealing the stolen moment, I believe. Yeah. We do know that it was not Queen Solomonia because she said it wasn't her. Queen, um, was it Herodimus? Um, I feel like the Lord of the Hunt might be more likely. Hmm. But it could be un um, someone else entirely, just a, you know, random foot soldier or something. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't, doesn't seem, that doesn't seem Lord of the Hunty if you think about it. Hmm. We could possibly ask him if we wanted to take the time. We don't really have but time. If he, if he was doing something that he thought would make her happy, mm. I mean, yeah, that was maybe. the only reason he was chasing us. But he, this is what I don't understand, and I keep coming back to this. Just the one thing? <laughs> no, it's early yet. I have forgotten most of the things I don't understand so far. That's one benefit of sleep, I think. Even poor sleep. But as Praxis had said, the, the caretaker gave his heart. And if Pishwish has it, and it was given to Pishwish, why would the heart be still with Pishwish when Pishwish was thrown there? Why would the heart be not taken? From Pishwish, stripped of him like everything else. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if Pishwish went there intentionally. After all, if this Marut or others were after the heart, this might be a place they could not see or maybe could not go. We know that, or we think we know that it won't be as hindered as we hoped, but I'm, there's a piece missing here in this puzzle. Well, it, it could be that they specifically said that he was adequately punished by being thrown into the abyss. That, that, was, that was fairly explicit. It's possible they didn't know he had it or know what it was, or maybe it was concealed in such a way that it was not detectable. I mean, when you touched the the arm of Arik, it became a part of you. True, true. All, only as long as it got back to the heart, or back to the body, I should say. I suppose that might have been what happened to him. It, it, it was given and made part of him. It's possible. Hmm. So he found it. No, it, it was given to him. It was given to him. What if? 
I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not overly familiar with the workings of the abyss, but what if it's the heart that's keeping him in this cycle? Like, um, what if that's responsible for reanimating him every time? It could be. If it is a part of him, then the question we had earlier of whether we're rescuing the heart or Pishwish is irrelevant. They are one and the same. Well, now. I don't think that was ever, I mean, that was a question I think you asked, but we need both anyway, regardless. He has information that's valuable. Hmm. Hmm. How do we get out? Getting in seems like we have some idea of that. Finding them, maybe, with the help of the Gith Yankee, but they themselves have been decimated each time they've gone forward, right? Well, we so long as we have hold of him and we're all together, I mean, if, if I can hold on to enough power, I can plane shift us elsewhere easily enough. Much holding him there. Why could he not do that? Does he not have that power, maybe? He's a thief, right? Like, not everybody has that kind of power. I can't do it. You can't do it. But he's not just one of us. He's one of the Fae. He's an Eladrin. Had... Yeah, like Denobrium. Oh, I see. I see. <clears throat> I had thought him to be much more than that. Hmm. Well, I think having the heart of the caretaker does make him more. Well, they do say that the uh, heart makes you stronger. I don't think they meant it as literally as this, but maybe. Um, if I can ask, I've, I've seen you do this before, I believe, Nirakina, and perhaps you can't. This is going to be very dangerous. And while I left things better than before, I was wondering if one of you could just send a message to uh, my mother. I can't. <laughs> in, in, in my preparations last night, that was not one of the things I prepared for today. That's all right. I, I, mean... I understand the, the need, but I cannot personally do it. Yeah, I, I I can't do it either. I mean, I would love to, believe me. I don't have that ability, though. I, I have a message, but it, uh, it's only with somebody that I can, you know, kind of see that's within range of me. I, I think that other one is called sending. I don't have that. Do you have that, Cadence? No? No. No. Never mind. I'm sure she'll understand. And I'm, I'm sure she'll tell my father why I left in a hurry. Well... As soon as, as we are able to, we can. Yeah. Absolutely. I was just going to say that. Wait, do you still have that paper, Larry? It has to be on the same plane, though, doesn't it? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I do have the paper, but yeah. I think that's a limit. I'm not sure. It, it might be able to go through a, a breach, but I don't know of a breach anywhere near here, so. Yeah. It's, it's not... It was just a, a thought. I, um, since remembering them, I, I can't stop remembering them. So. I'm sorry, Alaric. It's, it's all right. It's all right. Besides, we're coming back. Some of us, at least. That's we're a joke. all coming back. It's a joke. I'm, I'm sure we're all coming back. Come on, Alaric's a funny guy, isn't he, Nira? <laughs> You're rubbing off on me, Cat. Hey, hey, telling terrible jokes just like you do. <laughs> as long as I'm not rubbing on you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I want to talk about something serious for a moment. That's new. I could be serious for a moment. We're going this is to... about the packs of wild dogs. I don't want to hear it. No, listen, the packs of wild dogs, they're infiltrating our inner dimensions. We have to know. <laughs> We're going to the abyss, right? Seems like it. Do you guys think that there's a possibility we might run into Jinxie in the abyss? No. No? I don't think that was the place she was. I hope. Well. 
I don't I think. Say, I hope so. not. But... I mean, no. She, she's. I, I think it might be a little bit longer before we have to worry about her again. All right, I'm just, I'm just checking. <clears throat> but if we do, we'll be ready for her. All right. right? Maybe Jinx. Right? Maybe, hey, maybe Jinx is the Marut. <laughs> I don't I think don't... so. Maybe out. Jinxie's grandmother Praxis. Maybe Jinxie's a Laric. <laughs> I don't think she got me all right. paranoid, man. <laughs> all right, how about we establish something here? Some yeah. phrase that we know that it's us. I don't know <laughs> if she can read minds or not, but at least there would be something we could we could try. Tippy toe. Or an item. Tippy toe. Tippy toe. Yeah, trust me, tippy toe. You mean? Kind of like so that's like the secret up on your password? Toes. That's like the secret password, yeah. Tippy toe. I don't think that's going to work. Why not? So like if you if you think someone is jinxy, then you just be like, what's the secret password? And if they don't know it, then they're jinxy. She was able to tell you guys things that only I knew. Right? Because she's nosy, man. Oh, that's true. That's true. She oh. she got them mm. from somewhere. And it was not from my lips. Maybe it was from. Never mind. I don't want to get into that today. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. I, I digress. I feel I. I didn't mean to lead us stray us down from the the path. I just wanted to bring that up. But if okay, that's fine. Let's 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 do what needs to be done. I just, the one thing we can probably assume mm -hmm. is that once we've entered the hut, the hovel, whatever it is, mm -hmm. if it's truly outside of. The queen's influence the marut won't be far behind and most likely it won't be far behind us in the abyss either so we'll have to keep moving well, maybe maybe the the gith yankee can stall it for a bit I don't <clears throat> know. well that was part of the whole reason that mira and i had that idea was because you know the marut is like a purely lawful construction and the abyss is all chaos, so hopefully that will slow them down. We don't know for sure, but it's a theory and a hope. And Or, even if it doesn't slow it down, maybe it will distract all the things that would normally go after Pishwish and us. That would be hell. We could also try to glue it. I mean, if we had to, it's going to take a while for it to get out of... If we could glue the damn thing. To what? Somewhere. I don't To the floor of the abyss? I don't know. The floor of the abyss. <laughs> what does the abyss look like? I don't does it know. Have a floor? I don't. I've never been there. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> but like, I'm just maybe, saying. I hope it's carpeted. Maybe we just once we step out of the portal. Maybe. Well, no, I don't think that'll work either. Never mind. You also know the that glue has to set for a full minute. Yeah. Mm. So we, if we're gonna do it, we have to make sure that we keep it in one spot for a whole minute. That's. That's the way to do it. If we could do it, but then it couldn't follow us. Unless it has universal solvent built into its whatever it's made of. Or a wish spell. Or it could just teleport. Can you do that if you're glued with that stuff? I think that is unknown. I mean, that could be really bad. There's only a few things that can... I mean, I think that it, what so. you would know about it is that what you glue together effectively become one thing. And so theoretically, it could teleport along with whatever it's glued to if its ability to teleport would be capable of doing such a thing. If you're talking about gluing it to the floor, that starts to raise questions of like, well, okay, is that paving stones? Is that a chunk of the floor? You know, so it the wouldn't just teleport out of the glue, but what it might do is bring some of what it's glued to with it. We need to glue itself to itself. Glue it hands to its eyes so it can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Right. One, one hand over its big old eyeball and one hand over its reflector dish. Yes, just like that. If we could catch it sleeping, that wouldn't be a problem, but I don't Archie think had to wake the thing up, so, you know. Yeah. I don't know if it sleeps. 
Yeah, I think it was good Cut to my... the Marut curled up in a little ball, the little anime balloon coming up. Honk shoo, honk shoo. <laughs> There's a little teddy bear. Yeah. Oh, so cute. A little tiny pink blanket laying over it, like barely covers one <laughs> shoulder, but it's on there. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to draw that in my head now. It's now the littlest Marut. <laughs> <laughs> I can't beat this guy. He's too cute. <laughs> okay. So, I don't know. I mean, we just have to figure it out. We, there are a lot of things that we can't figure out. That we're just going to have to cross those bridges when we get to them. Like, we can sit around and theorize about what would happen all day, but we'll never know until we do it. It's true. I'm just waiting for Otterkey to be finished with his breakfast. Hey! Oh, it looks like he finally finished the bowl. <laughs> well, Seriously, Archie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Wrong>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chooch, were you able to f follow some of that, or some of it? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so breakfast, and now, and now, finish up that toast so we can go. And That's like okay. two loaves worth of bread yeah, there that you ate a toast. So it just is so good. All right. Um. So we're we're talking about like this being imminent that we're leaving correct yeah wow. oh yeah well, unless you guys um, have other stuff you want to do you guys are in control we have to leave soon um yeah we're on a time limit uh uh, uh Alaric, i need your help with something real fast um what? if you just um just uh come with me for a minute we'll be right back and I didn't break it, whatever it was. She leaves and she, she goes back upstairs. Fine. Um, oh, Otterkey, I wanted oh. to ask you about my... Oh. Uh, oh, never mind. I think I remember what happened. Uh, I'll need to get your armor made. Maybe you can do that. I'll hmm. be just a minute. Uh. And I'll go follow after Nirakina. <laughs> so... Yeah, what do you need? Something um, broken, something moved. So I don't think we need she, to rearrange the rooms here. They uh, they do that themselves. Uh, she kind of she closes the door. I close the door, and then um, just I'm pacing a little bit. Um, Are I'm you a worried? Nervous. I'm I'm sure we'll be fine. We've been in well, actually, we probably haven't been in worse, but we've been in pretty bad places. At least this, we have some idea what we're getting into this time. Except for the Hubble. We really don't know much I about just, that. It just... I need you to be quiet for just... Just one minute. Okay. So this is a little weird. Um, normally when this happens, it's... There's flowers and, and sunbeam and it's it, it's it's a whole thing so what the hell are you talking about i just just and uh, kind of I, I i point i point to the the chairs like it, it, just sit down for just a minute please just sit uh, all right so uh Heard your prayer. Um, uh, um, yeah, I, I didn't entirely. I, I mean, I wasn't thinking that it was. I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I guess I, I must have. I did it wrong, or something. No, it's not. Can you can you close your eyes for for a minute? I can't. I can't do this when you're looking at me. It's weird. Uh, just please. This. All right, but make it quick. I can probably recover from it. Whatever you're going to do. Closes his eyes. I'm pretty sure I deserve this. I mean, I haven't always made the right moves, I suppose, and haven't Alaric, stopped. Alaric, stop talking. <clears throat> so, kind of stand in front of him, like, wave my hand in front of his face, make sure he's not looking, because... You know, I can weird. feel the air, right? Like, I said stop 
talking. It's already Sorry. weird. Okay. <sighs> All right. So out of my pocket, I pull the necklace that I've made. And I will take it and reach down to tie it around Alaric's neck. What? What's this? So as she finishes tying, she's sort of leaned around the back of him and it's not enough. And I know it's not enough. And you don't have to give me anything. I, I it's I I appreciate what Shut you do. Up, please. <laughs> Alaric. Rushama knows your worth. And so do I. And as I back away, I brush the barest kiss across his cheek. And as I do so, I feel the spirit of Rushama stirring ever so slightly. And I know something's happened and finally, I feel like I've done as much as I could. So when you feel the spirit of Rishama stirring within you, Nira, you know that that's happening, Alaric, because you feel it too. You can't what? even tell how you know or what sense you're feeling with it's not anything you can really process in a way that you've ever processed before, but you feel, you know, just inside you somehow that the spirit of Rushama has, has touched you and granted you through Nira power, divine magic. What? Uh, what? How? Why? I, 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 what, 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 I, uh, it, it feels like, like quartz and, and, and limestone and so much more, a mountainside. How? Why? Faith is a powerful thing, Alark. It really is. I'm... I'm glad I put my faith in you. And now... Uh, in Rishama... Can, can I look at this thing? I, I Can I open my eyes? Is, is, it, is it, Can I see? Um, Am I allowed? Yeah, yeah. Um, go go ahead. Sure. Yes, oh. absolutely. Oh. I'll just, um, you know what? I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to step out for just a Wait, minute. I'm going to, no, I, I'm, I, I'm, I want to let you like adjust. It's, I have questions. It's, it's a thing. <sighs> I have so many questions. I don't know that I can answer all of them. And in case... You forgot. We're a bit pressed for time. I think we could discuss it later. Um. Uh, I, I, I guess I, I, I don't. How, how does this even? Thank you. I, I can't well, say more than that. I, I don't have the words. I can feel some of them coming to me, but. Well, I know, and Rushama knows that you want to help, and you don't, despite what we tell you, you feel like you don't do enough, and this is what I could do for you, so that maybe it's a little easier for you. This is... Amazing. 
The word seems so small, but I will, and he stands up, I will repay your faith in Rashama and in me. All you need to do is use what you've been given wisely. Oh, that's not easy. But I, I'll try. It's all about intent, Alaric. A little bit's about execution too, but I, I, I get your point. Okay. So, I am. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so you, I'm. I'm you, gonna. You made I'm, this. I'm, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. I, yeah. I'm just kind of you know. And I only have to sleep four hours, so you know, a little bit of time on my hands. <laughs> and um, can we just? This is really, my tea is getting cold, so. I mean, I'm, we can probably I'm heat that up. Gonna go. It's fine. <laughs> they can make you new tea. But I yeah, but if we're gone for too long, like they're gonna like it's it's gonna be a thing. So I know your yeah. tea is important to you. I won't mm. keep you from it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll yeah. You can whatever you need to do. Okay. And. I will find, I will skitter out of the room. Um, and As you're like at the top of the steps, you hear me be like, for the last time, Ket, no, I don't think they're making out. <laughs> Technically wrong. <clears throat> but, Nira uh, comes, when, Nira, when Nira comes back, I'm like, hey, Nira, I had them warm up their tea for you. It's fine. <laughs> uh, and just for uh, for the sake of the audience, uh, mechanically, Alaric has been granted one level of cleric in the Tempest domain. Wild. Tell him what he's won, Christiana. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we have to just list all of the different... Uh, uh, the new beard! like that. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, slightly tarnished halo. Yeah, so um, that's all I ask. You, you definitely sense within you now this divine connection, and it has granted you mystic insight into certain arcane and, or excuse me, divine ancient rip magic rituals and so on. Which means, like, you can do new spells and stuff. Yeah. Um. She didn't tell me how to... <laughs> Could figure it out the same way I did. <laughs> can, you, can you hear me all... Of course you can hear me all the time. You're a god. Sorry, that was dumb. I'm still getting used to this. I shouldn't probably just blurt everything out to you. I'll try to be... <sighs> Walks over to the mirror... Don't really look any different. Although this is... This is, um... And I put that next... Puts it next to his heart. Underneath his shirt. Well. Mountain be praised? That's probably not right. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, that's... I think I have something to do. And kind of goes downstairs. We should probably get going now. Yeah, we're just waiting for. All right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Good. Uh, then, trying not to, but failing to, his eyes keep going back to Nirkina. And this is sort of like. This. Very much not looking at him at all. <laughs> and slightly flushed, just a little bit. <clears throat> oh my god, it's Tormund. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make fine giant babies. Um, 
Uh. <laughs> okay, so anyway, let's go. Are you ready? Archie, put the bread away. You, you, you want, we can't take it with us. Oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. So uh, do we car? just like uh, tell, tell, tell the queen we're ready to, to go or how does that work? Yeah, that's what she said just to let her know. Yeah. So we're you going want me to then, do that? right? No, I think do we, we could do it. Anybody could do it, really. I know, but I was just asking if you wanted me to do it. That's all. Since you know, I have a good relationship with her and everything. Yeah, but you know. You want to do it, Cadence? So you can. Sure. Do it. Okay, go ahead, man. I just like open the mansion door and look outside, and I'm like, "Your Majesty, we're ready to go." So <laughs> as soon as you open the door. You, yes, Cadence, are met with a familiar equine face. This is the rainbow unicorn pegasus named Spectral Epiphany that you met at the Fae Queen's Gala. My friend! Yes, Spectral Epiphany does that, that horsey bow thing. <laughs> and says... Uh, Queen Solomonia, her radiant grace, has asked me and my fellows to transport you to, well, quite an awful place, really, but we're happy to serve you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad that it's you. I, I thought about you the other day, and I hope that you're doing well. Well, I am doing wonderfully, although right now I believe there is some concern of a horrible monster fighting its way through the Queen's domain. Mm. Yeah, that's probably our fault. I'm sorry. That's all right. I know you didn't mean it. No, I didn't. But that's why we need to probably hurry. I'm glad that you're taking us. Um, and then I lean back and go, I'm like, come on, guys, we're riding some Pegasus. And Nero beelines for Cadence. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. So I there's, mean, there's, oh, go ahead. No, no, I'm just wondering if we're actually riding Pegasus's. Mm -hmm. Pegasus. Pegasus. Yep. You, I think that it's like octopus. It's one of those words that, like, theoretically, you could actually but, go either way. If there's more of them, why is the word shorter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could talk about that on the right. <laughs> so, what? Here's what I'm going to uh, give each of you just as a little offer. I imagine Cadence probably wants to ride Spectral Epiphany. That would be Spectral Epiphany's choice, too. They know each other. There's a connection. But I would like each of you to describe the Pegasus that you are riding. Just for the... This is for the image of all of you taking off on these Pegasus. This is, this is I. Mine is... Look, mine looks exactly like a tiger. Is it actually a tiger? No, no, no. It just has the, the you know, the stripes and the colors okay. of a tiger. So yeah. still like a horse pegasus, but just yep. tiger striped. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Mine is a gray silver, but it has a slight purple sheen to it. Nice. <laughs> it's a game of chicken. Who has to go next? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Google the horse, y'all. put you I'm on cheating. the spot. <laughs> Pick uh, your Pegasus. I'm I'm thinking that the the one that sort of came, comes over to fetch Alaric is larger than most of the other ones, and just seems way too excited and happy and thrilled to be here, and just is sort of prancing and dancing all the time. And Alaric just looks at us like, "Can I just walk?" <laughs> And uh, it, it, it sort of gives you a little, like, a bemused, it clucks its tongue, it's like, oh, you. <laughs> I just kind of look at him. Hey, Alara, you know who walked, right? I mean, the Maroot's probably walking. I kind of pat my tiger pegasus. That bitch, Carol fucking Baskin, that who <laughs> walked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ashamed uh, through uh, through uh, through uh, cultural osmosis. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I had the same uh, same wavelength that yeah. uh, Autocree would uh, <laughs> would <laughs> be presented with. Essentially, a pony that looks way too small to bear him, and 
not a little apprehensive about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe so, a little grumpy. So the large uh, otter key on the on the smallest <laughs> pony and the tiniest <laughs> member of the party on the biggest one is yours. Yours on fire at least. <laughs> little little dark cloud over its head. And donkey, yeah, it's it's your. It's your. <laughs> <laughs> There was a, in Fantasia, there was one of the, the donkey Pegasus, wasn't there? No, it was a donkey unicorn, I think, and it hung around with Bacchus. That's what it was. Yeah. Anyway, all of you on your Pegasus mounts <laughs> take off into the sky. Um, and you find, actually, as you are taking flight across the landscape, that although it doesn't... Like, if when you look down at the scenery below you, it, it doesn't necessarily feel like you are moving beyond... It, it, the speed that you feel like you're moving with the air and so on. Like, you can see the landscape passing below you, but you also sense, looking out further away, that there is some magical effect happening here, that you are somehow tesseracting this Feywild, essentially, that you are not actually traveling further, and yet you are going to arrive at a more distant destination. Somehow the, the landscape of the Feywild is folding itself in order to transport you to where you're going more quickly than it would normally take to just walk there in a straight line. I just kind of imagine the unicorn horn starts pulsing blue white and then the the uh the little curves of the of the uh feet of the uh, of the uh uh, uh, uh i forgot the feet name anyway uh, of their hooves oh, starts cur carving and then little nacelles pop out so yeah <laughs> and uh little uh, all the little firefly uh you know fey wild will of the wisp glowy lights all streak out <clears throat> like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, uh, so quickly the light begins to fade as you realize you're being flown into a, uh, you know, a dark band uh, of the Feywild here. And you are looking down and you realize that this is uh, a, a, a dark and nasty swamp. And it's not like the bogs that you fought the dragons in where it was just like this bleak wide flat plain of mud this is like dense marshy trees and um you know and and undergrowth and stagnant water and uh, but you you can like smell it from above the tree canopy that it just the smell of kind of like rot and decay but at the same time growth of new plant matter and all of that sort of thing it's this very sort of fetid swamp um and the the pegasi kind of circle a little bit and seem to take take a moment trying to find a place where they can land um i think you might guess that they're looking for a place where they can land without getting their hooves messy you know like all mm -hmm. in the mud they don't really want to get all muddy from the yeah. swamp, just get but... nearby uh, i'll jump off <laughs> um <laughs> and uh i can i can just kind of lift myself up and set myself well, down <laughs> i th so they're 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 taking a little while but it's not like an excessively long time i mean if you guys sort of make offers you can but they're mostly just looking for a good spot um eventually they do kind of settle in and you realize that they're they've they've managed to land you on sort of what passes for like a hilltop in this area it's just it's a relatively small area of what seems to be solid ground and you realize just off to one side is what looks like a an old rotten boardwalk uh someone has made like a little bridge and there appears to actually be a tiny little hut of some sort of swamp dwelling creature that would build a, uh, a hut, but uh, it looks like old and sort of worn down, and uh, you don't see any 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 creatures there, but you do hear you know sounds of various swamp wildlife off in the distance. 
But uh, as, as they all sat down, uh, Spectral Epiphany uh, says, uh, My Lady Cadence of the Water, I know that you are here on an important mission, and so I wish you luck. If you follow your way through this network of bridges, you will find your way to Grandmother Praxis's house, and I'm told that's where you are trying to go. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that you brought us all this way. Of course. I would do it for you. Thank you. I hope we meet again soon. I wish that as well. In the meantime, we will return. We are needed in the battle. Be safe. Right. And so they thank they, you, thank you. They all take off and uh, and head away. And in the meantime, you are left in this dark nighttime, you know, uh, sort of foul-smelling swamp. That there's not a lot of light even coming from the sky because there's just a dense sort of canopy uh, above you. And you realize that you know. You don't have to go far past this little hilltop area where it just there's, you know, ankle deep at best stagnant swamp water everywhere else. But there does seem to be a sort of pathway made from these old rotten boards. Um, and, you know, now that your eyes are adjusting a little bit, you look past, there does seem to be more huts. It seems like... There might be a whole <coughs> little uh, village of these little huts. Oh, boy. Creepy. Uh, we're going to have to figure out which one is hers. And we can probably ask for directions, but... Mm. Yeah. If we need to, we will. Let's just start going. All right. All right. So who's, who's right. sort of leading the way? I will. <coughs> Hmm. Yeah, you have a better eye for detail. Yeah. It's kind of what she does. I'm a tracker. <laughs> okay. So you, you quickly realize that it this is almost like a maze of all of these little bridges and walkways. Um, so make a survival check for me to try to find your way. Mm. That is a nine twenty-two. Okay, that's pretty good. Well, it's like I was saying last week. He's like, you guys level eighteen. You just do whatever you want. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you pass a lot of these little huts, and when I say hut, I should make be clear that a lot of these are really little more than like a five foot by ten foot place where there's a little bit of a roof and some walls put up to like maybe keep out the wind but there's not a lot to it and you look in these places like none of them are completely sealed some of them have what seem to be like windows of like a hole for a window or a doorway or whatever but when you look in you see sort of uh like you don't see like belongings like there's no effects or really evidence that anyone is currently living there but it does seem like a structure that someone would have built it's not natural uh, but you pass several of these and they all seem to be the same in the sense that uh, it was perhaps once occupied but does not seem to be currently occupied any signs of life at all uh, make a perception check Ah, that sucks. 21. <laughs> uh, oh. there, there is signs of life, but what you get with the 21 is that it's a little bit surreal because what you sort of continually have is this sense that there is life just out of sight all around you constantly, but you never see anything. Like you're hearing sort of swamp creature sounds in the distance. And of course there's lush like plant growth everywhere. Although a lot of it is kind of half rotten bog moss. But you know, there's the, the, the swampy trees and 
bushes and occasionally like lily pads and those sorts of plants in the water uh, all around you. And you hear various like insects or like frog-like croaks and that sort of thing, but it's, and it feels like it's all around you, but you don't actually see anything. Mm. It's like this place is almost like the painting of a place. Like it's a show. It feels like she's a part of everything here. Like she's watching and she knows. Um, the very Otter key make a, um, <laughs> I guess a charisma check. Like your spell casting <clears throat> modifier is what I'm thinking. Okay. Well, oh, Cass, where are you? Oh, plus four. Okay. Uh, 20, soft 20. Uh, okay, so you are beginning to pick up on... It's almost like a smell that you start to detect, but you know it's not just like a normal mundane smell. It's almost like a magic smell. That as much as this place stinks, it just reeks of, you know, plant matter and rot and decay and stagnant pools of who knows what, right? But mm -hmm. what you sense is that there is something else that you're detecting that doesn't belong here and you feel like is abyssal in quality hmm. and you get the feeling that it wasn't like like that it's it's more recent like it's newer it's not what this place usually is like sure yeah the uh, first thing i would uh activate my full divine sense mm -hmm. um 60 foot anything that would have been hallowed or um <laughs> Or locations of obviously creatures that are yeah um, bad. I think that uh, you detect kind of in the darkness up ahead. Uh, you feel like there's the presence of sort of an anti-hallowed, like desecrated mm -hmm. location. Mm -hmm. And also like another ping that feels vaguely fiend-like, but it's different somehow you don't quite know how to process it but it's it's basically ahead the way you're going yeah but you can't see very far line of sight's not very far in this place because sure you're, you're navigating around these like creaky boardwalks and i think occasionally like your foot goes through one of these rotten planks and so on <laughs> it's like you know, the the stuff is like barely holding you guys out of the this soup of you know yeah. black. <laughs> That's a technical term. Definitely seems to be the right way if we're looking for a uh, passage. Mm -hmm. mm. Excellent. There's something going on down there. I think I don't think we're gonna have a hard time finding. Picking out which spots is hers. Okay. <laughs> Watch your step. There may be traps. Mm. Are you guys watching for traps? Continue on. Are you going to well, check for traps? Alone? I will watch our steps because apparently no one's going to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch. I'm just not good at it. Okay. Well, I'll make a perception check. <laughs> ah, same thing. 21. I think y'all are, are laboring under the delusion that my feet are actually touching the ground. I, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about it. I think that be your wind-based flight, um, Nira, is fine for you, but every time you get too close to everyone else, it, uh, it sprays them with a little bit of swamp water. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you even too. necessarily <laughs> notice. I'm just saying that, like, uh, so maybe Nira doesn't even notice this, but you, you, everyone else, just every time she kind of, <laughs> you know, 
ho- hovers on in and then kind of moves away. You just like just a little bit of <laughs> spray. She's one of the ones that's just sort of flying around. I use a, a little magical uh, finger flip to push all the dust away or all the dirt away. Little, only slightly annoyed. So uh, you're making your way in this. Oh, did you make your perception check? Uh, That's 21. 21? Oh, okay. Uh, you don't detect any traps, although you do spot a couple of boards that probably would have given away if you step on them. So, yeah, don't uh, step there. Um, but yeah, you guys are making your way through. And then if, as you are pushing forward a little bit more, uh, you make your way about 30 feet further into this little place. And then you see there's clearly a big open central area in this little village. And in the center of it uh, is one great big, uh, you could call it more like a cottage compared to a hut. Like it does seem to have like a proper roof and door and um, there's not glass in the windows, but it has like a chimney. It seems to be made of stone and not just like found wood and woven leaves and that sort of thing. Um, and it is looks extremely run down, but intact. But what you also notice about it is that um, it is out in the center of this sort of almost lake-like area of water, and there aren't any of the little bridges that connect to it. It's just kind of out there in the center, sort of like, it's almost like it's just squatting in the center of this water, just sulking, looking miserable. That's this, what this house looks like. It's just like, it's like, Ugh. So, gonna assume y'all don't want to get wet. <clears throat> well, I mean, gotta imagine um, there's probably something swimming in that water. Probably. More like a moat, okay. really. Um, and uh, Archie, you, you can definitely tell yeah. that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Th- th- you're that th- that presence sort of feeling that you're feeling that that sense is uh, coming from from that direction for sure. Oh yeah. How far is it from the edge where we are? to the patch of land where the water ends. Um, so the, hang on, let me actually, uh, shoot. Well, I, I was going to, I was going to go ahead and put you on the map, but, uh, I'm not going to do that yet. Actually. Um, the, it is, so, the closest area of boardwalk to this little house um, is uh, looks like it's about 35 feet to where the this cottage is but the cottage actually like you don't really see any land around it like it's sitting like where the base of its wall is at the surface of the water and you don't see any land like past it like it's clearly not submerged it maybe it's like it's you know you might imagine there's a platform that it's sitting on right at the level but it's not there's no like land around it well because my thought is i could use control water and make a trench for us to walk through oh <clears throat> I was just be... wondering if it extends. It's... Even uh, if you were able to make it part of the way, we could probably jump the rest. Well, it's... Um, I can control a cube of up to 100 feet on a side, so... Hmm. Just empty the lake, then. Shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> but my hesitancy here is that given whose place this is, I feel like there might be other magics in place. Everyone make a um, perception check. Jesus. That's better. 20 not natural. Uh, 29? 20, yeah, same. <laughs> ha. 14. Eight. Uh, Alaric and Nira, both of you, 
uh, you notice something that takes you a little bit to process intellectually. Um, just like your initial sort of reaction upon looking at this house is that like if a house could look sad and sulky it does and in that same way you feel like you sense the house just going <sighs> like it sort of settles in the wind but the way that it sort of shifts a little bit, like you know, a gust of wind goes by and it shifts a little bit, but it feels like both the wind and the movement were a disgusted sigh. Did any of you see that it just sort of, I, it's hard to describe really. I mean, it, it, it kind of so, moved. What, what if we just ask? <clears throat> I think just the ripples. Ask. Do so you think? House. You did see it then. Yes, I saw it. And it kind of just sort of like it moved, but ask not who yeah. what? The house. The, the house seems to have a. Um. It's not a house. It's a. I thing. don't know if sentience is the right word, but it certainly has a personality. I mean, many things do. I've met. Uh, what was his name? <laughs> Granite, Granite Bob. Anybody remember Granite Bob? Sure. I mean, oh. here, here you might call him a rock, but he was alive. <clears throat> Not much of a conversationalist, but. So, um. Uh, all right. We're not on the elemental plane of house, but okay. Uh, hey, Ket. Oh, we might be. Yeah, dude. Ket, you have a way with words. I mean. <laughs> maybe just ask for permission. Try to be nice. Yeah, whatever you do. Don't bring the house down. What do you want me to ask it? Do you want me to ask it if it's feeling ask if okay? we can, we can come... if we can come in? Yeah. Okay. I mean, oh. if we're asking houses things, that's what I'd ask. The same, man. Since I've met you guys, yeah, I never thought they'd be ever asking a house for permission. But hey, just, just try it. Okay. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? All know? right. I mean, let's not go to the worst right away. There. I'll take a few steps toward the house. So, like, like out into the water? Or, or are you just kind of uh, already at the edge of this boardwalk? Yeah, no. Just, uh, I don't know. Where, wherever we're standing, I'll just walk closer to the house, I guess. Well, what I'm saying is that, like, I imagined you guys already at the edge of where the boardwalk goes. Oh, okay. And then it's All 35 right. feet of water you're not sure how deep okay i'll just okay i'll i'll, stay, I'll hang back at the edge of the boardwalk all right <laughs> and i'll just be like um so like hey house um i hope you're doing okay you're very pretty don't go too far just quiet let me Speak do my thing house quiet shut up all right so like we were kind of wondering um, if we could come in for a little visit. I mean, we're very polite and friendly, and I think I have some tea somewhere. And uh, we we just like to, you know, come on in and say hello to, to... The whole... You all feel just a slight tremor, and it's obvious in the water that you see ripples emerging out. And the whole house just sort of, like, can't, like, a degree or so. Mm -hmm. And I want everyone to make another perception check as as there's sort of this strange sort of rumble burbling sound from the Ooh. direction of the house. Who's better? Eleven. I'm confused 20. by this. A non natural twenty. Okay. Natural 22. one. Natural 22. one. Falling. Um. So is that a twenty six from Cadence? Twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Cadence, for just a second as this house mysteriously kind of shifts and there's this weird sort of tremor and burble sound, everybody catches that. But just for a second, you feel like what you're looking at with this house is the, the, the wooden sides, the wooden walls, the, the rotted thatched, roof 
just for a second, doesn't look like wood or thatched. It looks like wood colored and thatch textured skin. But then it's back to the way it was. It was just oh, a flicker when it moved. That is so weird. It, it's very much like, uh, have, have you guys ever seen, you know, cuttlefish do their thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's basically like, there's just a little bit of a flicker where it, it, it didn't look like, it, it looked for a moment like it was pretending to be a house rather than being a house. But then that flicker was gone. That's so weird, you guys. I, I definitely like, saw something that time. That was creepy. I would it like rumbled. to check it out. I'm going to slip off my ring. Mm -hmm. Check it out. See, what, <clears throat> see anything here. All right. Um, you don't see anything different. But make a perception check, another perception check as you're looking. Actually, make this seven. an... Well, okay. I was going to say make it an investigation check instead, actually. Sorry. Oh, okay. Right. Because you you suspect yeah. now. It's not just noticing. It's, uh, yeah. I'm not as good at these. So... Uh, investigation. Right. Yeah. 14. Okay. Yeah, um, you are looking more carefully and through the ring you know that you would be able to see through any kind of an illusion but you don't actually see any clue except that you're just also there's something you can't put your finger on that this house doesn't seem right like that that feeling you have of that emotive personality to it is just not going away like there's there's just a force to this place and there's no illusion there it's just it, it's you know it's it's there's something to it though like you can't put your finger on but as you're looking through there is another sort of lurch and you see the whole house again like sort of quiver like there's a you know an earth you know minor earth tremor water ripples out around it and then you all hear from inside a sound like Whoa! is there someone inside um i'm, I'm gonna back up a little bit <laughs> I'll follow Nira's lead and kind of back up a little yeah <laughs> probably about five ten steps something like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would you guys go i that, that was weird. Yeah, I'll, I'll back up. What if we have to let the house eat us to get to where we want to go? I mean, it, it's not surprising in a way from Praxis, but... Is anybody, things else, is anybody else curious what the base of this place looks like? Well, yeah. I really want to cast I'm going to do it this time okay. <laughs> that's a funny sounding spell <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm looking for the level here um, there's so many I'm of gonna, them I'm going to cast control rot water and part water in a trench um, from the boardwalk up to mm -hmm. I guess where the door is yeah so as you begin speaking the words and the, the wind picks up around you and the water starts to swirl and roil as you're taking control over it. And then you, you reach out with your divine will and you begin parting this swampy water. And as you are initially revealing the, you know, the ground beneath near you, you realize it's just like sodden muck of mud at the bottom, but then as it expands out, moving towards the base of this, uh, this cottage, as the water parts around it, you see 
uh, you know how when a cat sits on a very narrow perch and it's just got all of its four feet just like really close together, you yep. see four horrible, bizarre, monstrous looking legs all sort of cluttered together like that. And as soon as they're revealed, the house sort of lurches up and shakes, and you see it's the, the, the flesh of its skin shudders and changes to reveal that this is an, a big monster with its mouth where the door was, and we're rolling initiative. <laughs> <laughs> the mimic house? That's you, not you, a house. You, still, you still want it to eat you, cat? <laughs> I mean, it might get a chance anyway. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> No. That's no house. It's a hovel being. Fourteen. Fourteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Alaric. Nine. Nine. Archie. Six. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, one thing happens before we enter initiative properly. Now that this thing is uh, sort of lurching up and reacting to its legs being uh, uncovered, um, you see it sort of... And, th and it's like lurching around making this noise, and then it vomits and you see big like chunks like of stuff coming out and you realize as all of these things splash into the water that's outside this little trench that those chunks are in fact alive creatures oh wonderful oh and so i had to mention that before of course i brought they you are. all over to the map because here you <laughs> are oh. blah blah Oh my god, man. So. <laughs> or are they like family? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe you can ask. Uh, so, a uh, quick question. Ket, what is your dex modifier? My dex modifier is plus 10. Uh, just for dex? Oh, sorry, for dex. Sorry, I was looking at my saving throws. Uh, plus 4. Plus 4. Okay, you go first then. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you see a bunch of these things having come out. Um, two of them seem to be unfolding big leathery wings. Another one is big, like some sort of horrible monstrous gorilla. And then there are a whole bunch of small uh, humanoid uh, creatures that uh, have sort of vaguely hyena-like heads. Ah, wonderful. Okay. Sorry, I'm just bringing up a dice roller here. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I'm going to, I guess I'm going to stay right where I am Okay. and I'm going to cast cone of cold All right. on everything I can hit. <laughs> so remind me what's the, um, what's the cone of cold? Um, uh, 60 foot cone. All right. Yeah. I guess you get everything, huh? All right. So everything has to make a constitution saving throw. Yeah. Hang on. I'm just. Yeah, yeah, you definitely get everything. Uh, All right, well, here's me making a whole bunch of rolls then. Give yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, all oh, right. So let's first start with the regular knolls. All right, it's a constant. It's nineteen is the save. Mm -hmm. uh, regular knoll, regular knoll. Um, let's see, that's a four, sixteen. Um, what, what, what are they trying to get? 19. 19, okay. 12. 12. 10. 2. So all of Okay, so all of them fail. take 40 points of damage. They are all frozen solid into little null sickles. Oh, wonderful, okay. Uh, let's, um, yeah. Well, here, I'll just... Um, all right, and then let me, uh, actually, I'm going to also put on battle music. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, and then we've got the the null leader. Um, where is there we go? Um, he's gonna make gets a thirteen. He is not he is not dead. He is okay. certainly hurt by that a lot. Right. He looks very cold and unhappy with <laughs> turn of events. Um, although he does sort of have a gr horrible toothy grimace for you. No, oh, that's. Um, all right, now the Barulgura. Uh, gets 14, so that's also going to be a failure. All right, 40 points to him. Mm hmm. And then. Two of rocks, uh, eleven and nine. Yeah, they're all failing. Hey, all right. And uh, I don't expect the big guy to fail. Well, we'll see. And uh, yeah, he does not fail. He got a twenty-four. Alright, well, 20 points of damage to him. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so. Cone of Cold! And I think, so, here, let me also draw where this trench is. Um, I think that you have, um... What, so what was the dimensions of your trench, Nira? Like, what were you trying to have it be? Um, just mostly just like the width of the door. All right. So just kind of like. So I. Yeah. Think, so what we'll say is that um, the w interior of this little area is is like thick mud at the bottom, and it's only about like, it's it's like maybe five feet of wall of water on on either side. Like the, it wasn't too deep. But, uh, you know, it's water everywhere else. And so, you know, like Mr. Abrogura here is, uh, is on there. But now I think after Ket's Cone of Cold, there's, uh, there was an initial bit of sort of ice sheening over the surface of the water that's now starting to break up and crack as, uh, as uh, you know, the, the rest of the water is not frozen. Uh, but uh, there's little bits and chunks of ice floating everywhere now. Um, but now it is the Vrock's turn. Um, one of them is going to, you know, re rear its head back and just let out this horrifying screech. And uh, actually, I take it back. It doesn't do that until it flies closer to you. Takes up out of the water. Flies about right there and then does this screech and so everyone needs to make a constitution saving throw you are within Archie's um, <clears throat> yes yeah. I'll get the aura. plus four. Oh, plus four. 19 then yes, sir. so 21 24 19 19 All right. uh, everyone beat 14 it sounds like mm -hmm. All right, so it is horrible in its uh, sound, but uh, you are not stunned by it. The other one flies overhead. Um, it's about 15 feet above you. Mm -hmm. um, and as it flies overhead, you see that like some sort of a horrible fiendish dandruff, it's flaking off these gross spores off of its dry leathery wings all over you. And you are also going to make... Uh, for that, um, another constitution saving throw. Oh my god, man, it's pooping on us. Yeah, all of us for that one? Mm -hmm. uh, 21. Uh, this is against being poisoned for um, Alaric, so I guess he probably just oh. doesn't even make the row. So. Okay, that's great. Five. Nine. 21. Uh, that all was right. awful. So, uh, only... 
Only Ket then um, fails that, but Ket, you are now poisoned. Okay. Um, which means that uh, until you are no longer poisoned, you are, you know, all ability techs, uh, checks and attack rolls are made at disadvantage. Okay. Um, and then you are also on the start of each of your turns until you pass the saving throw is going to be, you're going to take uh, 1d10 poison damage, but that doesn't happen until your turn. Okay. So that is those things turn. Um, now it would be the gnolls, but they're all null sickles. So Nira, you're up. All right. Let's see. Um, um, that one hadn't moved, but, uh, kind of loath to use that right away. Um, 30 foot radius is pretty big, right? 30 foot radius? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, so you know, that's going to be 30 feet from. from well, there. and it's centered on a point that I would choose. So. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, no, I think I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm going to do it. Okay. I am going to cast Dawn. Okay. Um, yeah, so 40 foot high cylinder, 30 foot radius, um, and center it um, so that it gets all of these guys, but not not us. Sure. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely get all of them in there. Um, so tell me what they have to do. That is a constitution saving throw, uh, meter beat 19. They make it right right now or on their turn? Uh, uh, when the cylinder appears, each creature in it must make a constitution saving throw. Gotcha. Okay, so first the two of rocks, um, eight and 12, so they're both gonna fail. The Bralgura, um, they're all rolling really crappy for these. Um, gets just a six. The remaining knoll gets a 13. And the, the big demon house um, rolls... Oh, see? That's the only one that rolls well and has a high modifier, so that one gets a 23. I would note with that one, the trench also goes away. Okay. Um, and if they fail, they take 20 points of radiant damage. Oops, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> he vanishes. <laughs> I was trying to delete the uh, little um, uh, yeah, I was trying to delete a different thing. So they, they all failed, right? Um, the all, all except the great big guy. Okay, he takes half then. Right. So 10. What, so he takes 10, everyone else takes 20? Is that what you yes. said? Yeah. And, and that sticks around, right? Yes, that's a concentration. Okay. And I can move it um, as I need to. Right, right. Okay, um, so the Barlgura is looking really, really rough. Like he is clearly being burned and scorched from from this, this radiant daylight. Does not seem to enjoy the experience at all. The rocks clearly are burned and screeching as well, but they're a little bit, um, they're doing a little better. Um, the knoll also is not quite down, but looking really bad. Let me go ahead and put a, a shape on there. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, this. That's too big. I think that's a. No, it's still too big. It would be. I think that's about right. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this is the area of the dawn. That, like that. So yes, you have done a lot of damage to these these things, but nothing is completely taken out this turn. All right. Are you going to move or do anything else? Uh, I do want to... Uh, it's 
kind of rough terrain here, but I do want to back away, like from. Well, these you can guys, fly, cause... so you can. You yeah. don't have to stay on the little bridge or anything. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm going to fly kind of over. That looks like there's like a brown rooftop square thing, kind of over in that direction. Uh, west. Like, like here. Uh. Well, I'm I, up further, but yeah, that way. Perfect. All right. Great. Cadence. Okay, after the rock and roll guy there did his screaming thing, um, I looked over at Kent and I'm like, wow, man, you're not doing pretty good. And I plant a kiss of lesser restoration on him. Right. So you are no longer poisoned. Oh, you're so sweet. And for my second action, I'm going to fire a shot at the bald girl. All right. Um, that is a 19. Uh, a 19 hits. That is the um, And that is 14 points of damage. And as you, uh, as your arrow pierces its, its awful blood red fur, uh, it it seems to just like collapse in on itself, and it begins to sort of boil and implode and collapse like like uh, like a souffle when the, the loud noise has been made, and it it sort of just flumps into the water and seems to just dissipate out to like a, a, an oil slick. Ew. That's my turn. All right, uh, Alaric, you're up. Still stumbling on the souffle uh, image. Uh, the uh, so yeah, uh, putting one hand up in front of his face to shield himself from the bright light that's uh, glowing everywhere. Um, how far away is the rock in front of him, or how high? Um, it's is fifteen the other? feet off the ground. Oh, okay. All right. That's Just as a mechanical way. note, you only take damage from dawn if you. Yeah. Right. It's so it's bright, but uh, yeah, you're not in the radius of effect. With that. No. Sorry, you were breaking up there, Starla. We didn't really hear much of that. Um, um, but it is. Oh, actually... I, I was just saying, like, you, if you end your turn in dawn, <laughs> I'm having connection issues. Sorry. Yeah, right. Clearly. All right. Um. Yeah. But it actually is sunlight, I believe. Um, I don't recall if it is or not. No, he'll react as if it's sunlight. All right. It says the light of dawn, so. Yeah, okay. Well, just sometimes when there's, like, vampires and stuff, it, like, it... Oh, it says this light of sunlight, yes. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> yes, it is. That's yeah. what I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, yeah, shielding the eyes, uh, summon the axe, and then I will throw it at the one that's near me. All right. Uh, first shot. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, that is a 17 to hit. Hits. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. For 12 points of slashing damage. Alright. It takes that slashing damage. Alright then. Um, and I... The axe reappears, I throw again. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a... Um, oh man, that's an 18 to hit. 18 hits? For 15 points of slashing damage. All right. 15. And then one more throw. All right. Yeah, you're just like you're 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 juggling your magic axe here, except that it, it never comes down. It's just like throw it up, poof, it's back in your hand. Kind of get the imagine he's halfway through the next swing, already has the arm behind him, and it appears and throws. Yeah. That one was a twist, a 31 to hit. A 31 does hit, yeah. Uh, for uh, 12 points of slashing damage. Wow, yeah. So y your three uh, attacks just cut this thing to ribbons. It is not completely blasted out of the sky. It's not destroyed, but you have hurt it very badly, and it is, it is you know, uh, looking like it is not so uh, excited to be attacking you anymore. And he's going to move along the, the uh, sort of around the skirting of the edge of the circle. I see there's looks like boardwalk that mm -hmm. he can follow. 
To the, to the west here? Or like, yes, yes, like, to the west. Like, like that, maybe? Yep, yep. And right. a total of 25, so I think two more squares, basically. All right. Uh, All right. Okay. Otterkey. So Otterkey still has two javelins on him that he's going to throw. All right. Um, he'll uh, throw one at the, the one that Alaric just so handily beat on, because mm -hmm. I don't want it to get a chance to make another attack. Javelin, 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 javelin. Is 26. 26 oh, yeah. definitely hits. <laughs> but this is just, a, it's not a magical javelin, right? Correct. It is a regular old javelin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 13 points. All right. You throw this javelin right through it, like it, like in its mouth, and it just just goes right out the back of its head, like it, like there was no resistance at all, and the whole thing just, just like, it, it's like someone poured out a bucket of slop onto the water, <laughs> drops, <laughs> and it's already disintegrating as it flies. Yeah. All right, I like to toss the other one at the other one. Yeah. Thump, thump. Is 29. Alright, definitely hits, yeah. Ah, uh, 1 plus 11, 12 points. Alright, uh, 12 points. Okay, are you moving at all? And I'm gonna stay right here. Uh, bonus. Both of your javelins have now sunk into, uh, out of sight in. Into muck. Gross swamp muck. Alright. That's it for me. Alright. That makes it Mr. Knoll's turn. Irregular Knoll. Um, and uh, he is going to, uh, despite any sort of uh, sense that this is not a uh, smart tactical decision, he is just going to charge at you, Cat. And let's see, he's moving through difficult terrain um, in the mud here. So let's try to select him and not the. Uh, there we go. Um, so. Six. So basically, he has to dash to get to there. And he is oh, okay. not able to attack you. But you can see that he is basically doing his darndest to get as close to you as possible with probably the intent of messing you up once he arrives. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But he's having to wade through this swamp muck and it and it's slowing him way down. All right, that's his turn. And now it is the big demon house's turn. And uh, first, let's see if it recharges Disgorge allies. It does. So, uh, yeah. all right, um, all right, as it sort of lurches in the water, it starts going, whoo, 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 and it barfs out two more barrel gorillas. It's gonna get chilly real fast in here. Mm -hmm. So it does that, and uh, the Barrel Girls need to go back on the initiative. And they're new ones, so I'm gonna actually roll a new initiative for them. Which is very low. On their first contact with Dawn, do they have to roll against that, or is they, that just it, it's, if they end their turn there? Um. I think they have to end their turn there. Okay. So they've been, um, this is the equivalent of forced movement, right? Like they did not move themselves. Well, what does Don say? Does it say a, the first time you enter the area or if you end your turn there? 
When the cylinder appears, each creature in it must make a constitution saving okay, throw. Yeah. A creature must also make this saving throw whenever it ends its turn in the cylinder. Right. Okay. So these things have not had a turn yet. So they have the opportunity to try to get out of it before they would take the damage. Only when you cast it does it happen right away. I feel like it's just like burning off the gut slime from this thing <laughs> yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, all right, and let me just double check to see if. Um, um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it for uh, big uh, demon house. Then he needs to make another Constitution saving throw. Oh, you know what? I take it back. You're right. Uh, he he would move uh, because I was just trying to decide if he was going to move or not, and then that's of course why he would is because he needs to get out of this damaging uh, sunlight. And so, um, horrifyingly, this enormous gargantuan creature springs into the air like a tick, and then drops down to land right here out of the out of the uh, and it's just like crushing the bits of boardwalk underneath it and you see actually that where it was sort of perched and standing there's this vortex in the water that seems to be like uh, this constant whirlpool draining into god only knows maybe the abyss you you think (laughs) seems likely. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so that happens. It does not end its turn in the uh, in the dawn, after all. Um, so, that makes it now Ket's turn. Alright, one trick pony tonight. I'm gonna cast Cone of Cold again. Okay. So, constitution yeah, saving throws from whoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barl Gura. The two of them get... Um, I, I assume you want it on all of the little guys and not the big one, right? Because he he jumped out of the way, so you can't get him anymore. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. All right, just double chicken. Ten yeah, and eleven, so they both are going to take how much? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Okay. All right, and then the remaining rock gets oh dirty 20 oh huh. so, so he takes half a 38 which is what 17 um, 16 well it's gonna be uh it would be 19 19, 19 yeah, yeah that's right so all right so that one's starting to look pretty rough too all right and then i'm gonna use my my kitty cat movement um, since I didn't move my last turn, I'm gonna go sort of along the boardwalk to the to the right. Okay. Like um, as far as I can go, uh, and which I believe is twenty, thirty. So that would be your first thirty movement. If you want to go another thirty, you could go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Yep, that's perfect. Right. One 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 over to the left, so I can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, there we go. All right, perfect. Thank you. Sure thing. All right, now it is the Vrox turn. I think this one is just, it's going after the nearest target. So it's gonna swoop over here to you, uh, Alaric. And I don't want that window open. It, this time it is just going at you with its beak and talons. So beak, it gets a crit. Um, and it's gonna do. What's the total? Uh, 26, but it's a natural 20. Okay. Oh, wow. (laughs) Okay, well, it's very nice of you. Um, (laughs) It does 16 piercing damage. And then with the talons, it goes to claw at you as well. And rolls a natural one. So, there you go. You know, the uh, icosahedron giveth, the icosahedron taketh away. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so yeah, it, it slashes at you with, uh, ineffectually after sinking a nasty bite with its beak. And that is its turn. Nira, you're up. This thing has just uh, 
leapt out of the water and crushed down pretty close to you. Yeah, so I'm going to first fly up straight north closer to Alaric. Okay. So just straight up, yeah. Right. And then I would like to cast... Where are you? Um, Toll the Dead. Uh-huh. On uh, the big guy. All right. So that's a constitution saving throw for him? Uh, wisdom. Wisdom. Oh, okay. Mm. Not as good at that. By comparison, anyway. 15, so that's not going to do it. Nope. Has he taken damage? He has. Yes. From that first, uh, uh, from the dawn and from the first cone of cold. So that's 5, 8, and 21 damage. What does it look like when um, she does this? The, uh, so the toll, yeah, so what does toll the dead look like for, uh, for Nira? Well, it's more of a sound, but she just gets this very dark look to her face as she kind of reaches out and points, and you, then you just hear this bell. I, maybe it's like one of those, um, Sounding like, through the air. Himalayan, um, like, meditation chimes you know yeah it, it's it's a very deep sounding bell that reverberates in the chest mm-hmm. yeah and you can just like, see can see it. as it uh, as the shock wave of it passes over all of you harmlessly but then reaches it and seems to just vibrate its flesh violently and then um i don't think i can move dawn without hitting anybody, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Okay. Alright. Anything else? Mm. Uh. Yep, yeah, nope, that's it. Alright. Cadence, you're up. Okay. I'm going to bonus action lightning arrow. Okay. And I'm going to fire it at the big gross house guy. Yeah. Um, that is 28 to hit. Definitely hits. It is a big gross house. Surprisingly nimble, but still big. 31 lightning damage. Ooh. And then 10 regular, so 41 total. Wow. And then I'm going to distant strike teleport back the right towards the right, like towards where Cat went. Okay. Ten feet. And fire an arrow at the rock. The rock. It's it's V R O C K. It's the rock. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's Wayne Johnson. Well, Come on. <laughs> the rock. Um, yeah. He raises is, he does that eyebrow thing at you. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Um, that's 31 to hit. Uh, 31 hits, yeah. Uh, that is 12 points of damage. Oh, man. Almost. It is almost down. Okay. It, 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 you sense that its connection to this plane of existence is, is hanging by a thread that is the um, thickness of one hit point. I'm going to use my second teleport and fire my third arrow at one of the Volgara, though. Okay, wait, do you want to teleport another direction? Ten or? feet, like, in the same direction. All yeah. right. And I'll fire at the Volgara, the one that's in the middle. Alright. Oh, that's an E. Um, and that is 32 to hit. Yeah, I think you got that one. Um, that is... You could decide which of his nostrils you want this arrow to pierce. Um, <laughs> With a 31. <laughs> that is... Hello. So that's 14. Alright. Yeah, so 
I th I I like you know we haven't talked we haven't described it in detail in a while, but I I like to think that this effect is just this sort of flickering like you're you move to run, but you, it it feels a little bit just like like in a video game when there's lag, like you just keep expecting a character to be in one place, but then it's you know you're in a different place and it. I'm like Vanellope, I glitch out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and then I'm going to use my movement to go um, closer to Cat. Alright. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You can get right there. There you go. Yep, that's good. Alright. Hi. Hi. Alright, Alaric. You got this rock. Right, Rock is right in your face. So you got me doing the rock now. <laughs> Smell the smell the axe is cooking. Yeah. What can I say except you're welcome? <laughs> so he's, he's within regular melee range. He's right in front of my face. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he was just clawing at you. All right. So he raises his left hand, starts to make a motion, looks a little frustrated, looks over at, uh, at, at near Akina, and then just swings with the right hand with the axe. <laughs> uh, that's a 25 to hit. Yeah. And it doesn't see it coming. So Sneaky it had one hit point. So you want to tell me what it, what your axe does to it? But the roll was really good. Well, then can I hold off on sneak attack? <laughs> I mean... Because <laughs> the, the base damage was 16 damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's kind of wiggling his fingers. It's kind of watching his fingers move, and then he just kind of swings in with the axe on the other hand, catching the axe, uh, catching it underneath the neck and kind of pulling backward, and its neck kind of snaps off of the front of the body, which then starts floating and fluttering to the ground. And as it kind of collapses and shudders and spasms, it just starts to dissolve and into horrible smelling goop. Then he'll push forward to the head of the house. That's not really what it sounds like, is it? <laughs> All right. Do, you'll do, probably have do, to follow do. the yeah, follow the road there. Yeah. Did you? Want and to? I'll say you're right. in melee range at this. In that square. Okay. And that time, I will once again take a strike. 30 to hit. Mm -hmm. Is this sneak attack? I'm an uh, ally nearby as well. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, it's on your I think the other, yeah, the Vrock was so obviously on his last legs that I think you were you kind of just absentmindedly smack at that one while you're <laughs> heading for the other. <laughs> Uh, so that is uh, 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 22 points of slashing damage. Nice. So kind of swinging the axe coming down this time. Yeah. And then a slight swing and then backhand. Natural 20. Nice. Oh, I haven't had you one get, of these you, for a while. Things happen when you get a natural 20, right? They do. All right. So... First of all, I roll another D D another not another D twenty, another another twenty. That would have been nice. Uh, so it's only that. So twenty four points of slashing damage. All right. All right. Yeah. So I think you're 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 swinging back and forth with this uh, this this axe, and you're just like smashing its big snaggle teeth that are sticking out of the out of the the front of its mouth and it's just knocking them out of place and cracking others and you know you you uh, make it bite its tongue <laughs> how is this with the tongues this is weird <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see uh, yeah I'll stay where I am all right Otterkey. I'm going to turn around and take a step forward and start swinging my sword. All right. At the big house demon. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I can't make your little token face the other way, but presumably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thirty to hit. That hits. Um, uh, plus 13 is 26 points of damage. Nice. One swing. Master. 
whittling this thing down. The number two swing. 18 plus 24, so even higher. 32, uh, right? Yep. <laughs> to hit. Ooh, 12, 31, 17 plus 13. That 30, yeah, yep. 30 points. Wow. It's a combination of radiant and magical slashing. Mm. That matters. Um, I mean, in, in this case, it doesn't make any spe specific difference. It does um, take oh, all I, that damage. And I didn't use a smite. I should definitely smite. You might. When there's you might. Smite. And there's one that there's one that there's one that makes it stay in place. Where is it? It's grappling. Might wait. Uh, uh, where are you? I guess I don't have it prepared. I swear oh, I no. did. Okay. Let me make, like, check one more time. I thought there's one that sticks it in place. Ensnaring strike. There it is. Okay. There we go. Okay. So it is adds a 1d6 to the damage wise which is an extra five points of piercing damage. Oh. Um, <laughs> so thorny vine, a mass of thorny vines appear at the point of impact. Target must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained. Strength saving throw, it is a giant house, so it might do okay. <laughs> yeah, save DC is 18. It got a 17. <gasps> It is restrained. Yeah, so as as Otterkey strikes out with his his blade, each strike flashing with radiant energy, um, the reflection from the dawn behind him also glinting off of the, the metal, and then these strange spectral vines crawling out around this thing's mouth and sort of piercing into the ground, holding it in place, and it's like... Oh. I, think, I like to think that it's like it's over its teeth on the bottom jaw, part of his jaw, like right. that's what, that's what's held to the ground is like, you know, it's, it's jaw at the bottom of its, uh, mouth and it's sort of like thrashing around trying to get off of that. All right, cool. So that's Otter Key. Anything else? Nope. All right. Barguras. That's a hard word to say. <laughs> um... Now they can actually both also do like super jumps. They're they're good at jumping. And I think I think they're actually going to go after Cat uh, and Kate. So this guy jumps swoof. Swoof. And they're going to just like just Go go ham on you guys. That's what they're doing. So uh, they they can attack recklessly. So they're gonna. Um, so each of them are making two uh, fist attacks and one bite attack. So first against you, Ket, we're getting um, a twenty-five to hit. Uh huh. For where is it? For uh, 11 piercing damage, or no, excuse me, bludgeoning damage, because that was a fist. Oh. And then uh, an 18 to hit. Uh, 18, yep, yeah, that hits. And then that's going to be another 12 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And then the bite is uh, another 25 to hit. Uh-huh. For... Um, 15 piercing damage. Yikes. Yeah. But, but it just went so crazy on you that you can see it t tired itself out a little bit. It's reeling a little bit. Um, okay. At now. So it basically attacks against it have advantage now because of its reckless attacks. Oh, okay. Um, so same deal for you, Cadence. Two fist attacks. It's just trying to slam you with its big old demon fists. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a 
Uh, 24 to hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, for 12 bludgeoning damage. And then a 22 to hit. For just 7 bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. And then the bite. Uh, it's going to get a 24 to hit also. And then that's going to be... 11 piercing damage. Okay. But same deal for you. Like, it, it's, it clearly, like, it leapt 30 feet out of this stinking water, slammed next to you and just, it's like just frenzying at you. Um, but then it's also, like, obviously a little bit dizzy afterwards. Okay. All right. Um, that is the Barl Gurus. It is this last little um, Knoll's turn. Um, he's gonna try to get out of this <laughs> difficult terrain. So, so I think climbing up to there, that takes 20 feet of his movement. So he is um, gonna use the rest of his movement to, to, does he not have any ranged attacks, this guy? I don't think he does. He does not. Um, but so he's going to basically charge and use his attack, his action to dash to try to get up to where he can f try to flank, uh, uh, flank Artarchy. All right. Now it's our big guy again. Let's see if he recharges Discourage Allies. He does not. Uh, uh, he does not barf up any new demon friends. Good. Yes, what he does do is try to bite Otterkey. And he gets a, oh, that's a relatively low roll, so only a dirty 20 to hit. Miss. I, I think he probably crunches well, on your chunk. armor and, and yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, cracks a tooth on you. Um, yeah, so it, it's sort of trying to, like, lash its teeth around at you and, and manages to not do any uh, any damage to you. All right, so Cat, you're up. All right, Cat is going to pull out his magical harp, and he's going to strum a little ditty, mm -hmm. and he's going to cast Firestorm. Whoa. And so each each one each ten foot cube is gonna like hit the the ball graphs in front of us. All right. So they gotta make deck saves, which I'm sure they're probably good at. Well, but let's whatever. see. I think they're because of their reckless, like an attack roll would be advantage against them, but they don't have any like specific disadvantage. But they will so they they'll make their deck saves. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, so one got a natural twenty for a total of twenty five. Uh -huh. um, and then the other one got a nine. So. Okay, so the one that got a nine takes fifty-two points of damage. All right. Um, I oh, yeah okay that's definitely gonna kill him. Okay. <laughs> He's <Oof>. incinerated. <laughs> there's not even an oil slick left. There's just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then actually, um, the and other the one that succeeded. What is it? It's half, so it'd be half what, damage. So twenty-six. 26. Yep. Okay, that one is not dead, but he's very badly burned. Ooh. That was Austin Powers, right? Or wait, no, what was it? No, it was a Venture Brothers gag where uh, a guy had, you know, pressed the button to make his henchman fall down the trap door, and then, y you know, you hear fire go up. But then you hear <laughs> it's like, hello? I, I... I, I, I wasn't killed, but I am very badly burned. <laughs> Someone help me. I am uh, anyway. I am going to... Uh, I'm actually going to use my bonus action this turn to uh, inspire Cadence. All right. And I'll just kind of look at her and I'll just be like, It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. <laughs> all right. So, Nira, you're up. Um, All right. Cat just mm. set off a very impressive firestorm over on the other side of your dawn there. Right. So I'm wondering if I can move it to get both that one remaining and that guy down by Archie. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? 
I think you have some, you have got some fine, fine control well, there. You can just barely, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And then I'm gonna use Toll the Dead again okay. on the, uh, big guy. All right. Um. Got no, Constitution reason. for Dawn. Or, no, yeah, Toll the Dead. Never mind. <laughs> uh, he gets a 22, though. Bleh. Alright. Um, um, and then they will, uh, you know, yeah. they only uh, will take the damage if they finish their turn. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Cadence, you are inspired. You've got a very badly burned Barlgura who is now brightly lit by a spotlight of sunshine. In front of you. I'm going to do another lightning arrow at the big house. Die. Okay. Sure. Um, and that is a 29 to hit. Alright. That will hit. Okay. Okay. So that is... Come on. 13 points of regular damage. Mm -hmm. 14, 16, 17 points of lightning damage, so 31 right. total. So, technically, I just realized that he has resistance to lightning damage. Oh, so okay. I, I'm not going to try to retcon anything from before, but we'll just say that for going ahead. So, it was 13 okay. plus half of 17? Was that? No, it was 14, so it would have it been 7. Okay. So, so 20 total. Yep. All right. And then I'm going to use my second shot to fire at the ball for All right. It's a 19. How do you kill that Burl Gura with his big old four hit points? Um, I'd like to shoot him right through the eyeball. Mm -hmm. And then just have the arrow just kind of stop there and be like, don't move. That happens. And then uh, gradually, um, did you guys all see Return to Oz? Mm. Uh, okay, this is a too obscure yeah. reference now. There's a claymation <laughs> stone creature in there that sort of crumbles in, in on itself when it dies, and it's that's what I was thinking of here. But eventually, like it goes, and the, and the barrel girl just kind of staggers for a second and then just sits and then gradually sort of just decays and like collapses inwards like it's uh like it was hollow inside and then turns into slime gross yeah demons are gross all right that was Cadence's turn Alaric your turn oh wait did you all have right. one more attack um no it's only if I do the teleport and I get more than right. two creatures gotcha all right, Alaric. All right, he seems to have figured it out this time. He raises his left hand, he points at the creature, and he yells, Bell! And cast Toll the Dead. <laughs> Bell! Toll the Dead. It will... It, and it, it... does it... is it different? For and rather time? than a deep resonant, he gets... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, alas for Alaric, uh, alas poor Alaric, uh, it got a 23 on its wisdom. Uh, okay. So then he just sort of shrugs and backhands it with the axe right. <laughs> as a bonus action. <laughs> uh, 31. All right. And that would be sneak attack because I have an ally nearby. Mm. And Nira calls out, good try! <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. That is uh, 23 points of slashing damage. It's, this house is definitely looking winded. And also, like, you've broken a bunch of its teeth and, and uh, <laughs> you know, set it on it's, fire and froze it. And, yeah. The I mean, property it, value has gone down. Yeah, for sure. It was also supposed to be resistant to that cold damage, but whatever. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, that makes it Otterkey's turn. All right. More sword twacky twacky. Are you even paying 20... any attention to that knoll behind you? <laughs> oh, no. All right. Not at all. All right. <laughs> he probably doesn't notice it yet. 24 to hit. <laughs> all right. That hits. <laughs> 26 point no 28 points damage all right and again there's a 20 to hit hits Yeah, 11, 12, 13, 14, plus 26 is 27. Wow. Yeah, this thing is really having a hard time now. It's it's struggling to move. No bonus action still. I'm good. So, it is now the Knoll's turn. Um, and so it's coming up behind you and it's going to try to bite and claw at Otterkey. So first it tries to bite you and it gets a 22 to hit. And it's, it's in there. Yeah. And it does six piercing damage and you must make a constitution saving throw. Is that considered magical piercing damage? Um, no. Boom. I would take half. Um, mm -hmm. Constitution? Yep. Uh, 18. Uh, that's a success. Um, it's also going to claw at you twice. Uh, well, it's just cocked. Um, that's another 22. And then a natural one for the second attack. So, um, so the one claw that hits is just five slashing damage, not magic. Okay. So he's working real hard. Yeah. So, you know, when he does that, it get my attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'll look at him and uh, extend my finger down my sword for the hellish rebuke. Okay. <laughs> Which does fire damage. Uh -huh. Ten points of fire damage. You kill him. <laughs> so I, 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 you know, he's just like, ah! <laughs> just snap your fingers. He is burnt to a crisp. Unlike the demons, all of the gnolls, their bodies remain. They, they are dead, but not, they don't just disintegrate into slime like the demons did. All right. Uh, that was the gnoll's turn, but now it's dead. Now it is the big blob monster's turn. And it recharges Discourage allies. Ah! Uh, all right, so let's see. What does he do? Um, all right. All right. Uh, it is going to be... You know what? It it doesn't do that. It it wants to try to use its action to um, break free of the restraining thing. This might another strength check, which was versus eighteen. Rolled low again, so it only got a thirteen. Ooh. So yeah, it it spends its turn struggling to try to get free of that thing and is unable to leap away. And then barf at you from a distance. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so that turn did not go well for it. Um, uh, in the meantime, um, that would make it go around the horn to Ket's turn again. Okay, Ket, uh, seeing no enemies close by, mm -hmm. 
He's going to stay where he is, and he's going to point at the big, ugly house with legs and cast Finger of Death on it. All right. So it's a constitution saving throw. So uh, I'll tell you right now, even if it succeeds, um, half damage will kill it. So describe how you see this uh, all going down. Oh, okay. Um, I just uh, I, I look at Cadence and I'm like, hey, baby, watch this. And I put up my finger like a gun and I'm just like, eh, and this like dark necrotic energy shoots across the, the boardwalk and strikes it between the eyes and starts disintegrating it yeah. as its flesh <laughs> bubbles and flakes away. All right, so here's another very dated reference. Does everyone remember Super Metroid, where there's that one boss that uh, falls in the lava and then starts to come back out, and you think, oh, God, do I have to fight it again? But then you realize its flesh is burning away, and now it's just a skeleton. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. I actually well, do remember that. Yeah. yeah. Huh? <laughs> right? So that's kind of what's happening, but what you realize is as the flesh sort of bubbles away and is revealing what you would expect to be a skeleton, what is actually left behind is a house. Oh. And uh, the sort of the demonic flesh sort of bubbles and sizzles away. And what's left is a now mostly collapsed house lying on its side, definitely not where it used to be. Nice. But you uh, you have... defeated the demonic infection that had taken over the house. Well then. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, I think <laughs> should have cleaned more often. You know that came from like whatever weird portal she had in there to the abyss probably. Um, I want to fly <laughs> over and check out, look around the remains of the house, see if there's anything of use in there. Okay. Um, you, you, you look, and and it's it's this is like in Wizard of Oz, if you had tried to look for furniture in Dorothy's house after it had landed in Munchkinland, like maybe, but none of it seems worthwhile. And there's more interesting stuff going on elsewhere. Um, I don't want to delay that too much. I mean, essentially what it seems clear is that um, the central floor seems to have been torn out. And so like you look in and like where you would expect to see this is where the remains of the floor should be. Like most of that seems like it's missing. And you suspect that what used to be in the interior of this house probably got sucked through the portal. Fair. Do you think she built the house on top of the hole specifically for that reason? Or, or it seems like a bad thing to do by accident. Yeah. You know, yeah. Seems like uh, the kind of thing she might do. I mean, you could literally watch your investment go down the drain. So if I use... Sorry. I was going to say, uh, Otterkey or Nira can both make a religion check if you like. Shall do that. It's already a holy house. Nineteen. Ooh. All on the floor. All right. Um, yeah. So Nira, you recall that when you talked to Queen Solomonia about uh, like you know demons and demon portals and everything, she described it as being like like an infection, like an infestation. And what you think may have happened here is that the portal wasn't always this big. Like, mm. like when she was not here to keep an eye on it, it seemed to, you know, Grow. enlarge and it took over the house and so on. Yeah. So it, so, yeah, the, yeah, what's there now might be considerably bigger than what it used to be. So I explained that. Um, I yeah. guess we are going so, swimming. Uh, yeah, it looks like, well, uh, I mean, before we go through it. Is there anything we should do to prepare to protect, protect ourselves from being <clears throat> infected so, by house demons? Here's the thing. I have a spell that I can cast 
that can potentially make us a little more immune to the effects of this place. It only lasts a minute. Um, after that, I would have to hit you with something else entirely. Um, so we, we got to make a, a decision if we want to do this now or once we get to the other side. I think that we should wait mm -hmm. and save it for like if we get into a fight like as soon as we get there yeah. rather than like waste it. If it's only a minute. Then... Okay, so what this is, it's um, so it's enhance ability, just in case you're wondering. Um, and what it would do would give you um, an advantage on a charisma saving throw, which would help defend against the effects of the abyss um, on your person. I think staying I... close to Otter Key is at least a, a part of that. Um, yeah. Also, I think, I think Nira, that um, what you would know is that the effect of oh. the abyss works on you over time. It's not instantaneous. It says concentration up to an hour, casting time one action. Mm. Okay. What I'm just, what I mean though, is that it's not something like that passes over you like a wave and then you, you're safe afterwards. It's more like right. over time it works on you and you only oh, make right. this yeah. throw every periodically, but it's, it's meant to be accumulation over time. <laughs> It was kind of right. like that in the Shadowfell, too, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. True. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to let you guys know that mm -hmm. I have that prepared, should that be something you want to do. And yeah, it would protect you for at least an hour. Yeah, I'm, I'm not telling you not to use it. I'm just saying it's not like something where you, you're going to pass through a force field and that's what you need it for and then you're safe. It's more like, right. you know. You'll you'll want to keep an eye on each other and so on. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> good to good I to mean, have locked and loaded in the toolbox. Honestly, the thing that you guys probably all ought to uh, recall about it, although I don't know that Nero would remember much of it, is that uh, when you fought the uh, the demon lord in the tree, um, it you know, traveling into where it had sort of made its new layer kind of infected some of you with its flaws, right? Oh, yeah. That's what made yeah, Alark eat all the that. chicken. Oh, chicken. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of the same thing, is that it works over time. But, yeah, right. so. This, uh, swirling vortex of Slime and muck and doom probably is still circling over there. Well, cool. we're gonna go. We better go now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Last one is a rotten egg. <laughs> and I'm gonna fly over that way and just kind of like drop down into the portal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna swim, I'm gonna through, swim the towards it. Slowly plodging through the water. All right. Dude, yeah. you can At swim. Half speed. You could swim. Not in plate. Sure you can. Well, you bear in mind too that thing. this is this is five oh, feet right. of thick swampy water with thick mud oh. at yeah. the bottom. So it's not <laughs> like, oh, well. like I mean you could swim, but it's <laughs> I don't know that that's necessarily a superior experience to waiting. <laughs> it's faster. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, does Look, everyone just know. kind of everyone except Nira uh, just kind of wade, wades in and uh, I mean, I think as you approach, you can definitely feel the current of this whirlpool sort of threatening to whisk you off your feet, but you know, as you are you know, planning to go that way, you, you try to kind of stay in control, but uh, you're eventually getting a little too close and the current just sort of, you know, flips you up and you find yourself spinning down into darkness. And Horizon. that's where we'll stop for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that scene from Bill and Ted, too. <laughs> <laughs> this was a terrible journey. <laughs> All right. Major Will and Ollie. I think 
the the bottomless pit where you get tired of screaming. You know, it's like that. Yeah, that's, that's a good gag. Like it's it's been in lots of things, but it kind of always works. Anyway, <laughs> we'll have to find out what happens to you in the abyss next time. Um, but uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and uh, and uh, leave it there for tonight, and uh, we'll be back next week for more adventure on so many. So many. <laughs>